Right, so look, we're in a position now to have a look at um, the preparation and identification of gases. Now, there are a couple of gases that we're going to be looking at. Um, the first one is uh, hydrogen. So that happens to be on page 60 of your workbooks, page 60. So where it says aim to prepare and test for hydrogen, oxygen and carbon dioxide gas, uh, we're going to begin by um, following the instructions and um, the first thing it says there is to fill, quarter fill a test tube with hydrochloric acid. So test tube here, uh, hydrochloric acid here, quarter fill. So we'll take this out and I'll just do this over the sink so in case I spill anything. So I've got our quarter fill test tube of hydrochloric acid and uh, we're going to add, if we can look at our instructions here, drop a piece of magnesium into the acid and close the test tube with another test tube. Our magnesium is here. Um, now I'm not too sure just how big that is on your screen, but they're um, two centimetre pieces of magnesium. I'll just get one of these. And as it says, drop the piece uh, and then close with another. When the reaction slows down, place a lighted taper near the bottom of the inverted test tube. So the so this is the inverted test tube, and I don't have a taper, but matches will do. So I'll put this in, and hopefully you can see there that there's a lot of effervescence, there's fizzing. I'll put this over here, and the hydrogen, which is lighter than air, should float up into this test tube, and what I'll do, is I'll take a match, strike it if I can. Um, okay, now, so I should have a test tube full of hydrogen. Did anybody hear that? That's called <laughs> the pop test. Uh -huh. um, it's well, it exploded. Now, the other thing that you hopefully you can see, uh, and probably you can't, but there is um, water condensed in this test tube. It's not clear like this other test tube here, okay? You see the difference between the two. So there's water in here, this one. Uh, whereas this one, there is no water. So what we've produced is water as a result of that pop test. So looking at observations, right, where it says observations, what we observed, first of all, was a uh, bubbles of hydrogen forming around the magnesium. And, of course, we've interpreted that as being hydrogen. We can't say we saw some hydrogen. Um, now, testing our observations. Our observations were these. We heard a pop, spelt P-O-P. -P. Now, you might have said, oh, well, that was a, an explosion. Um, never mind. Okay, so we heard a pop. Uh, I don't think we saw anything else, Paul. The other thing that we saw was water on the inside of the test tube. So two observations there. Uh, one for the formation of the hydrogen and the pop and the water for 
the testing. Now, the equations, first of all, for the formation of hydrogen. Now, for that, uh, what I'm going to do is write this up on the screen. So magnesium solid plus HCl uh, aqueous produces hydrogen gas plus uh, magnesium chloride aqueous. Now, what we've got to do, of course, is balance that equation. So to balance that equation, uh, magnesium one, magnesium one, hydrogen one, hydrogen two. So let's put a two in front here. So they're balanced for hydrogen, chlorine, or okay, two there. So this is uh, done. Um, now for the equation for the uh, popping, that's hydrogen burning. Okay, so hydrogen is going to burn with the oxygen in the air. So we've got a gas there and a gas here. And that forms water. And I'm going to write in liquid there. Of course, as soon as it formed, it would have been gas, but it condensed, as you saw. So um, two here, two here, two there. No, I've got to put a two in front here, which means I've got to put a two there. So there's our balanced equation. So the next uh, gas involves um, dilute hydrogen peroxide. This is hydrogen peroxide here. The chemical formula for hydrogen peroxide, you probably can't see it, um, probably because it doesn't say it here. But anyway, hydrogen peroxide is H2O2. It says place 10 milliliters of dilute hydrogen peroxide into a small conical flask. So here is our conical flask. Now, you might remember it is called conical because it is shaped in the form of a cone, 10 millilitres. Look, I'm not going to um, actually measure the exact amount of 10 millilitres, but I will just pour in a quantity which does correspond very closely to 10. Uh, it might be a bit more than that. Okay, so there's our 10 millilitres of hydrogen peroxide. And what we've got to do, um, what we're doing with this is adding some manganese dioxide. Manganese is not to be confused with magnesium, as you know. Now, manganese dioxide, this is manganese dioxide here. Um, now, this manganese dioxide actually doesn't take part in the reaction. It's a chemical that I'm going to describe as a catalyst. Those of you who, who uh, do biology, you may learn what the word catalyst means. What it does mean, it's a substance that is present in the reaction, speeds up the chemical reaction, but remains unaffected at the end of the reaction. It's still present at the end of the reaction, so it's not um, changed. Now, as soon as I pour just a wee bit, from this, um, uh, this spatula of this manganese dioxide into here, it'll start producing oxygen. And then we're going to have a look at the classic test for oxygen. And that is that it will relight a glowing splint. What does that mean? Well, 
A splint is a small bit of wood. So this is a splint. It's not glowing at the moment, but when I light it and blow it out, at the end it will be glowing. So I'll have a glowing splint. So um, I'll put this in here and hopefully uh, it will relight and give me um, an indication that um, oxygen is present. So I only want a very, very small amount of this and at the same time, um, <laughs> you're really handy to have four hands in this experiment. Um, okay, I only want a really, really little bit of this. Uh, just see, that might be enough. Um, I don't know if you can see what I've got on the end of that, this small fraction. Um, right. Um, a lot of oxygen coming off there. Um, I wonder if you can see it. Okay, I'm lighting this. And going to blow it out. Make sure it's glowing. Mm -hmm. It's certainly getting brighter. It hasn't burst into flame yet. So I'm not too sure just how, how well the, um, the camera is ca capturing what I'm trying to show you, but when I get it fairly close to where all the oxygen is coming off, um, the splint is becoming brighter. Let me just see if I can fill it up with oxygen. I was doing this a bit earlier in the day <laughs> just to make sure it worked. And the first time I didn't did it, it went out. But the second time I did it, it really burst into flame. All right, look, all that's happening at the moment is that that glow is getting brighter. Oh, there we go. Okay, now it's really lighting up. Oh, can you see it? After all of that. Okay, so it's relit. Now, what we're, what we're saying here is that oxygen is supporting combustion. Oxygen doesn't burn, okay? Oxygen doesn't burn. Oxygen supports combustion. But there we are. We saw that oxygen relighting a glowing splint. That's the classic test for oxygen. So um, as far as observations are concerned, when it comes to formation, what we can say is that um, well, we saw the bubbles. We saw lots of bubbles coming out from the hydrogen peroxide. And obviously that would be bubbles, bubbles of gas. So bubbles of gas came from the hydrogen peroxide and manganese dioxide. The observations for testing. The glowing splint burst into flame, or you could say the glowing splint became brighter. 
okay, something like that. Now, the equation for the formation of oxygen. Now, as I said, the manganese dioxide acted as a catalyst. So the reaction, I'll write it on this board here, is... Uh, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2. Now, I could write here liquid or aqueous. I'm going to write aqueous uh, because it's actually dissolved in water. 35% um, peroxide, and you can see H2O2. And what happens is that that breaks down to give water which obviously is a liquid and uh, oxygen, uh, which is a gas. I'm going to put manganese dioxide here, um, and that is a catalyst. Now, at this stage, of course, you're probably saying, but the equation isn't balanced. You're quite right. So let's see how we can do this. Um, if I put a two in front here, that gives me four hydrogens. If I put a two in front here, why do I put a two there? Because of that. So let's see how we're going now. Um, four hydrogens, four hydrogens. Uh, two by two, uh, four oxygens. Two plus two, four oxygens. So the equation there is balanced. Right, so look, that is the production of oxygen and the test for oxygen. Looking at the first method of producing carbon dioxide, it says the acid, the action of acid on a carbonate. Place some lime water into a thin test tube. So our thin test tube. Now, lime water is this one here. I don't know if you can see what it is, but it is a solution of calcium hydroxide. So for a long period of time, calcium hydroxide has been called lime water. One, uh, two words, lime water. I uh, hope you can see the spelling, L-I-M-E, water. So uh, I'll add the lime water to the thin test tube. Okay, and I'll do this over the sink so I don't, if I do spell this. So there it is there. Once I put that in there, it might be a bit hard to see. Just move it a bit closer. Hopefully you can see it there. Um, so that's um, the first instruction. Place a spatula full of calcium carbonate into a fat test tube. Here's the fat test tube. And here is the calcium carbonate. And uh, I will... Take this off, eventually get it off. The childproof top. Uh, got it off. Right, so a spatula full of calcium carbonates. So there's, oops, there's the spatula. And so I'll put this in here. Okay, so there it is. I'll just sit that in there for the moment and get the delivery tubing. Here is the delivery tubing. Uh, and what will happen is that the acid, because it says quarter fill the test tube with hydrochloric acid, quickly place on the test tube, a stopper with a delivery tube and place the end in the of the delivery tube in the lime water there. Okay, 
So what I want you to notice, first of all, is how clear that lime water is, okay? It looks like water, very clear. Now, when I get the hydrochloric acid, and now what I might do is just add a little bit of water to this so that the, and let it settle a bit. Um, the reason for doing this is just pouring that hydrochloric acid straight onto the um, calcium carbonate. Uh, it starts to react very quickly. So I'm just sort of slowing it down a little bit. I don't know if you can see, but the calcium carbonate is not soluble in water. Most carbonates are not soluble in water. And hopefully you can see that it started to precipitate right down to the bottom. So I'll sit that there and add uh, the hydrochloric acid to it. So here's the genuine hydrochloric acid. And um, adding this to it. Now I should do this over the sink. Okay, so I'm getting plenty of bubbles there, and I'll jam this in here and put this in here and just bring this a bit closer to the camera in the hope that you can see. I'll give this a shake. And now you can see the bubbles are coming up all over the place. And perhaps you can see that there is a change in the lime water. And it's not as dramatic as it was earlier. In fact, it's starting to clear now. So that's not terribly um, white as it was. What happens if we add too much carbon dioxide into the lime water is that the um, calcium carbonate, which forms in here, uh, dissolves again. I think that's what's happened. And it's starting to become clearer. Um, and that's, that's due to the formation, when it becomes clear, uh, due to the formation of uh, calcium hydrogen carbonate. So let's see what we can write in the um, space there in your workbook. Um, observations. Well, first of all, we got lots of bubbles or effervescence uh, when we added the acid to the carbonate. So the key words to say there are lots of bubbles coming from the calcium carbonate and acid. Observations with the testing. Now, it happened very quickly, but um, the, uh, the lime water, the best expression for this is to say it turned milky, M-I-L-K-Y for milky. Now, as far as the um, equations for the formation of the carbon dioxide, uh, again, I'll go to the board. We'll have a look at the board. So what we had, first of all, for the formation was we had calcium carbonate, and we'll call that solid. Okay, so it's an S uh, plus hydrochloric acid, and that's aqueous. That produced carbon dioxide, water, liquid, and calcium chloride. Now we'll just check to see if it's balanced. We've got one calcium, one calcium. 
one carbon, one carbon. Three oxygens, three oxygens. One hydrogen, two hydrogens. So let's put a two in front there. Okay, now we balance for hydrogen. Chlorine, two chlorines, two chlorines. Right, so we've got a balance equation there for the formation of carbon dioxide. Now the equation for the testing of carbon dioxide. So as I said, the lime water is calcium hydroxide. So that is CaOH in brackets two uh, plus carbon dioxide gas and the cloudiness, the whiteness, the milkiness is calcium carbonate. Now that will be solid, okay? It's actually a precipitate. It wasn't as strong as I would have liked um, to show you, uh, but uh, it did uh, show a, a bit of cloudiness. And the leftover is water. And that's liquid. So checking for balance. Calcium, one calcium. Okay, two times that plus two there is four. So three plus one is four. So we're balanced there for oxygen. Hydrogen, uh, we got one, two, we got two hydrogens here, two hydrogens there. One carbon. Okay, so we've got a balanced equation. Now, that was method one of producing carbon dioxide, an acid on a carbonate. Uh, the second method is what's called heat decomposition. Now, the word decomposition comes from the word decompose. So we're looking at or what decompose means, as you may know, is to, to break down. You know, we decompose when we die and we're put in the ground unless we have preservatives added, which is what normally happens. But anyway, so decomposition is breaking down or separating. So uh, what we can do here is to take another carbonate now, this time it's going to be a carbonate of a metal that is not terribly reactive. What I'm going to use this time is nickel carbonate. So there we've got our lime water. Again, you can see it's very clear. And the next thing is um, to add our nickel carbonate to this test tube. So I need a spatula again. And just adding that now to the test tube. You can see it's a lovely, hopefully, hopefully you can see that's a lovely green colour. Um, and it doesn't surprising, uh, it's not surprising that it's got that colour because nickel is one of those transition metals and those tr transition metals tend to be colourful when they form compounds. What I'm now going to do is um, set up the Bunsen burner so that I can heat the nickel carbonate, close the test tube with, with the stopper, which is equipped with the delivery tube. Okay, so that's what I've got here. And um, I'll just position the lime water so hopefully you can see it. Um, and sit that in there. And I need a test tube holder. Delivery tube here sitting in the lime water. Right. 
breakfast right here. I might get some warm air coming in here for starters into the test tube. Okay, so we've got bubbles coming through now. Hopefully you can see those. Um, I'll try and stop this fairly early on in the piece so you can definitely see the milky colour. Now you can see the, I hope you can see anyway, the nickel carbonate is changing colour. And what of course is happening there is we're getting, it's driving out the carbon dioxide from the carbonate. And I'm going to lift this out now. Um, and what we're getting is nickel oxide inside this test tube. Now, if we have a look at this test tube here, you can see the milky calcium carbonate that we had, okay? So there it is, definitely milky, white, and that white precipitate, if I let it settle, it is starting to settle uh, now, that calcium carbonate would drop down to the bottom of the test tube. The other thing is if I put this back into the flame, chances are I could get that milkiness to disappear and get calcium hydrogen carbonate. And calcium hydrogen carbonate is soluble in water. Um, I can see from where I am that there is a clear, what, one centimetre of uh, liquid at the top there. So the calcium carbonate is starting to settle down towards the bottom of the test tube. So that's our second method of producing carbon dioxide. And again, that same test, the test is carbon dioxide turns lime water milky. Uh, observations. So the observations are, first of all, that nickel carbonate changed from green to what looks to be dark brown or black. So I'll just put that up close there to the camera and you can judge yourself what colour it is. Okay, I think maybe black dark brown or black. So that's the observation. So clearly there was a chemical change. Now, apart from that, uh, you could uh, say that the lime water turned milky. Writing an equation for the formation of the carbon dioxide, well, that resulted from the decomposition of nickel carbonate. Right, so nickel carbonate, um, the uh, symbol for nickel uh, is Ni, and it's got a valency of two. Um, so there it is there. So nickel carbonate solid uh, plus heat uh, produces nickel oxide solid plus carbon dioxide gas. So uh, underneath that now you've got a summary table which uh, I'll get you to complete for homework. Apart from that, I hope you've got a good uh, set of notes there as a result of the experiment.